What's your version of God like? A father-like figure who is pure spirit, mind, or is some embodiment of nature? Does he want to love and bless everybody equally? Well, there's a good chance that your preferred deity, however you conceive of him, actually something like the tenth iteration of the Sumerian god, Enlil. Here's what we mean. Below are the basic evolutionary stages of development that your god likely passed through. Stage 1. Sumerian Father Sky God, Enlil Kar. 2900 to 2800 BCE. The earliest recorded religion comes from the ancient Sumerians. In the Mesopotamian pantheon, Enlil Lord of Air was the most powerful elemental deity who was considered father and king of the gods. Enlil was also worshipped by the Akkadians, Babylonians, Assyrians, and Hurrians. A little later, Enlil's name was changed to Elil by the Babylonians. He had several sons and daughters, including the moon god Nonna, Sin, the sun god Utu Shamosh, the weather god Ishka, Ardod, and the love goddess Inanna, Ishtar. Elil was depicted as an elderly father figure with a long beard, sitting on a throne in the sky. Although he was impatient and temperamental, Elil was described as a benevolent, fatherly deity who cares for humanity's well-being. Later, Elil was absorbed and assimilated into the storm god Marduk during the Babylonian reign of Hammurabi, 1792-1750 BCE. Merging storm gods with sky gods was a natural process for the ancients. Marduk would later become Zeus in Greek mythology. Stage 2. Elil was Elin Canaan. The Canaanites who were living in the Levant, which included ancient Hebrews and Ugrits, were heavily influenced by Mesopotamian religion, so much so, in fact, that they simply adopted the Mesopotamian pantheon of gods with dialectical differences in names. The head of the Ugaritic pantheon was El Plural, Elohim, which also became the common generic word meaning God in the Hittite, Ugaritic, paleo hebra Canaanite, and Aramaic languages, just like Mesopotamian myths. The Ugaritics called El Father, Father of Humanity, King, and described him as the Ancient of Days. He was kind El, the compassionate, an elderly bearded man, who is very old, wise, and lives on a mountain. In Ugaritic mythology, El was absorbed and assimilated into the storm god Bol. The Phoenician counterpart to El was the god, Dagon. El and later Bol was associated with bulls and oxen as a sign of divinity. Stage 3. Israelites merge El with YHWH Kar. 1021 to 1000 BCE. Originally, the Canaanite god, El, was the patron deity of the Israelites. Just like other Canaanites, the ancient Israelites viewed their patron deity as an elderly father figure, a king who lives on a mountain and is associated with bulls. Numbers 23-22 El brings them out of Egypt and is for them like the horns of the wild ox. Genesis 33-20 The God of Shechem is El Elohe Israel, is the God of Israel. El had a number of sons, including Bol and YHWH the latter god being a distinct and separate deity from south of Canaan. According to the Bible, the sky god, El, turned over control of the Israelites to YHWH. Psalm 82, El, has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. Deuteronomy 32 to 9 when Elion gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of El. But Yahweh's portion is his people. Jacob is allotted heritage. For a number of different reasons, including trade and general cultural appropriation, YHWH became the patron deity of Israel's royal family. YHWH was originally a storm god from the southern kingdom of Edom sometimes referred to with place names in the Bible like Sinai. Seir, Tman, and Paran, as with other ancient Near Eastern myths, for example, Marduk versus Chamot, Bol versus Yam, 
The Bible depicts why HWH as having defeated sea monsters at the beginning of creation. And just like with the storm gods Marduk and Bol, El was absorbed and assimilated into the storm god, YHWH. Deuteronomy 33-2, YHWH came from Sinai, and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran, he came from the ten thousands of holy ones, with flaming fire at his right hand. Judges 5-2-4-2-5 YHWH. When you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, yes, the clouds dropped water. The mountains quaked before YHWH, even Sinai before YHWH, the God of Israel. Habakkuk 3-3 Eloah came from Ammon, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, his splendor covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. Soon afterward, Israel split into two kingdoms, during this time, the northern kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom of Judah, fought over who could officially declare YHWH as their kingdom's patron deity. Stage 4. Jews stopped saying YHWH's name 3rd cent, BCE. In time, the kingdom of Judah became a vassal state of the Assyrian Empire, and some Judahite kings, like Josiah, wanted to rebel against his subjugation. When the Babylonians forced a power vacuum in the Levant, Josiah tried to resurrect Judah's kingdom by centralizing all worship to YHWH's temple in Jerusalem. In destroying other gods and sanctuaries in the land, Josiah was able to collect more taxes from all the people in order to rebuild an army. His theological justification for removing other gods was claiming that Judah's polytheistic worship of other deities was to blame for their subjugation. The Judahites were now mostly monolatrists, who worshipped YHWH exclusively, without denying the existence of other gods. Around this time, the Israelite religion overtly adopted anachronism in order to prevent graven images of other gods from reappearing and stealing resources from Jerusalem. But then the Babylonian Empire destroyed Judah and exiled certain Judahite aristocrats, including religious scribes and priests, who were taken to Babylon. These newly isolated Jews changed their theology to accommodate the socio-political upheaval of having lost their kingdom to pagans. The Jews found themselves with no king, no kingdom, and no temple. They could no longer worship YHWH as the national god of a royal family. So, in order to preserve their religious and cultural identity, Jews updated their beliefs about YHWH, originally a localized storm god, who merged with Enlil, and declared him to be a universal deity, who was actually responsible for the Babylonian exile in the first place. There, they began to write the Bible from the perspective of Josiah's YHWH-only movement, until they were liberated by the Persians. The Jews now became much more exclusivistic, monotheistic, and Tarocentric. By the 3rd century BCE, Jews forbid the pronouncing of YHWH's name and chose, instead, to use the general designation God, Enlil in Sumerian. Theos in Greek, so as to reinforce their new idea, that only one deity was in charge of all the happenings in the universe. Stage 4, the Enlil of Imperial Philosophers, Aprox, 3rd Then, BCE 17th Cent, CE. During much of human history, including ancient Near Eastern and Israelite religions, the gods were just like humans in almost every single way. They were physical persons, albeit invisible, who ate, drank, walked, talked, and pooped. Hence, the earliest depictions of God in the Bible describe him in characteristically anthropomorphic terms. However, because of their contact with an acculturation of other belief systems, the Jews had appropriated a more spiritualized concept of God, from the Persian Ar, Hura, Mazda, 6th century BCE, the Platonic Monad, 4th century BCE, and the Greco-Roman Demiurges, 3rd century onwards. The Greek philosophers, especially, did not like the crass and carnal depictions of classical anthropomorphic gods. Now, the Jewish universal version of Enlil 
became a deity palatable for a Hellenistic philosophers who conceived of the one as pure spirit or pure mind. Jewish theologians, like Philo and Christian apologists the Church Fathers, went out of their way to transform God into an abstract ideal. Jews and Christians melded ancient Near Eastern stories about Enlil, El, with the institutionalized imperial religion of the Romans, which the Roman Empire merely transformed into a body politic that spread through violence and coercion. This new philosophical god would dominate the theocratic empires of medieval Europe and Islam. Stage 5, the Enlil of Rational Modernists, Approx, 18th cent, 1960s. When God was Enlil, he was made in the image of Mesopotamian rulers. When he was El, he was made in the image of Ugaritic and Israelite kings. When he was the Christian Theos, he was made in the image of Roman emperors. When he was the Latin Deus, he was made in the image of feudal kings and lords. This was a pre-critical era that demanded total obedience and acceptance of the state religion. Then came the Protestant Reformation, the Enlightenment, and an overemphasis on analytical rationalism. This analytic approach to religion transformed medieval concepts about God into an individualistic belief system that was preoccupied with individual salvation to the neglect of doing real-world good. Liberals often dismissed the Bible for not adhering to modern notions of rational credibility, adopting natural theology and a nature-based view of God. Enlil had once again returned to his original elemental status. Conservatives reacted in the opposite direction by turning the Bible into a modernistic encyclopedia of supernatural facts, having the same legal status as the American Constitution. Enlil had now returned as a sovereign tribal deity who also favored representative democracies for some reason. Beliefs about God, whether liberal or conservative, were now dictated by democratic ideals of rationality and equality among believers. The pure spirit version of Enlil developed by Greek philosophers became a modern scientist who embodied absolute truths of right and wrong, and everyone was free to conceive of God according to their own conscience, which usually took the form of a president or business CEO. Stage 6, the Enlil of relativistic postmodernists, 1960s present. The problem is that the Father Sky God, Enlil, had always been a deity of redemptive violence. Offending El, YHWH, God meant divine punishment as a consequence, which was exploited for colonialist agendas during the early modern period. An angry Enlil still needed appeasement in order to dispense mercy, and this retributional God just didn't sit well with hippies. The Enlightenment made God to rationally seek. He was too much of a distant scientist and not enough like a best friend. So a change was needed. Those who inherited belief in this old Sumerian deity conceived of their religion as a relativistic personal relationship with God. The goal of this deconstruction was to strip away the socio-political influences of reigning paradigms so that a better, more loving one could emerge in its place. But postmodernists never actually got rid of Enlil. They just simply dressed him in new garb resembling a benevolent charity organizer or philanthropist. The post-enlightenment Enlil returned to his original role as a benevolent nature god who cares for humanity's well-being. Conclusion, which Enlil stage is yours, especially in westernized countries. The notion of god is now an amalgamation of beliefs that go back to the Sumerian sky god, Enlil, like El, Elil, God today is imagined as an old wise father figure who is king of the universe. This god has sons and daughters, and it just so happens that they are as humans his beloved children. Like the YHWH of later Judaism and Christianity, he is both benevolent and wrathful, a mixture of the beautiful sky and terrifying storms. Like the Allah of Islam, he is the only deity in existence. But with helpers, like a Greek monad, he is an abstract spirit who is superior to our carnal imaginations. Like the modern scientist, God is rational and knows all truth. But like the postmodern hippie, Enlil is associated with nature, pure love, 
and compassion. For some believers in God, a medieval version of Enlil is still culturally viable. For those who have abandoned precritical notions of religion, however, more updated versions of the sky god are promoted, both rationalistic and relativistic. But make no mistake about it, whatever version of god you believe in, we can trace him back to the sky god, Enlil, of the ancient Sumerians.